So here we're going to have a look at alkanol molecules and the way that they can react and a couple of their properties. So here we have an example, or here we have the most common alkanol molecule, an ethanol molecule. So we can see that it has one hydroxyl group on it. Now, we know that ethanol is produced from ethane, which is uh, used to produce chloroethane. And chloroethane is then used frequently to produce ethanol. However, ethanol has very different properties to both chloroethane and ethane. Due to this hydroxyl group, uh, ethanol is in fact a liquid at room temperature. Uh, similarly, because this hydroxyl group is very polar, so we've got a delta minus charge here and a delta plus charge here, due to the different electronegativities of oxygen and hydrogen, we have a very polar group here, making ethanol a very polar molecule. And that makes the majority of alkanols soluble in water, because they can form, because ethanol or alkanol molecules can form hydrogen bonds due to this very polar hydroxyl group, they can form hydrogen bonds with water molecules. Now obviously that, uh, that ability, that solubility in water is reduced as our alkanol molecule gets longer, as we have more and more carbons in a line, because the relative polarity of this hydroxyl group is smaller in comparison to the extended nonpolar carbon chain. So, so smaller smaller alkanol molecules with smaller carbon chains are going to be more polar and therefore more soluble in water than long carbon chains. So now we'll have a look at the types of reactions that the alkan alkanol molecule can undergo. The first type is again a substitution reaction. So these are very common reactions that lots of different organic molecules can undergo. So we know that alkanol is produced via a substitution reaction or is often produced via a substitution reaction of chloroethane. And so if we want to uh, have, a, have our ethanol molecule undergo a substitution reaction, so I'm not going to draw in the hydrogen atoms, but these, are, these lines represent hydrogen atoms that are bonded to carbon atoms. So if we have our ethanol molecule here, then what we can do is we can get rid of the hydroxyl group and substitute it for an amino group like that. So that is off how we often produce amines. So there we've changed ethanol to ethanamine by replacing the hydroxyl group with an amino group. So if we were to write this out as a chemical equation, we have the semi-structural formula of ethanol. We're reacting this ethanol with ammonia, which we know is uh, the basis or the sort of the, the origin of this amino group. So this all happens in the gaseous state. And if we have 400 degrees Celsius, and we have an alumina catalyst, then what we can do is replace the hydroxyl group with that amino group. And then left over, we have a H2O molecule. So that is how we can uh, use an alkanol molecule to undergo a substitu substitution reaction and create an amine. So here we've got ethanol being a uh, undergoing a reaction to produce ethanamine. Now another more interesting type of reaction that our, uh, our alkanols can undergo is a oxidation, an oxidation reaction. So first, before we understand that, we can, we, so alkanols can be oxidized to produce carboxylic acids. However, only specific types of alkanols. So we have three types of alkanols. These are primary alkanols, secondary alkanols, and tertiary alkanols. And these different names refer to the number of carbon atoms that the uh, hydroxyl carbon atom is bonded to. So for a bit more clarity, we'll draw out this structure here. So here we've got our hydroxyl group. And the carbon that the hydroxyl group is bonded to, this carbon here, is only bonded to one other carbon. And that makes this alkanol a primary alkanol. If we look over here at this sort of structure, and so we've got more carbons extending in either direction there, same over here. If we have our hydroxyl group here, then the carbon that is bonded to the hydroxyl group, that carbon there, is now bonded to two carbons. And that means that this alkanol is a secondary alkanol. Lastly, 
if we have a tertiary alcohol, that means that we've got a, our hydroxyl group bonded at a junction of carbon. So we've got this carbon here, the one bonded to the hydroxyl group, is also bonded to three other carbons, and that makes this a tertiary alkanol. So primary alkanols have their hydroxyl group at the end of a carbon chain. Secondary alkanols have their hydroxyl in, uh, in the middle of a carbon chain. And tertiary alkanols have their hydroxyl groups at the junction of, uh, of multiple carbon chains, like that. So these, these primary, secondary, or tertiary, or one, two, or three, refers to the number of carbons that this hydroxyl carbon is bonded to. So the only, the only type of alkanol that can undergo this oxidation reaction to produce a carboxylic acid is a primary alkanol. So all that happens in, a, uh, in this oxidation reaction is that well, obviously carbox, carboxyl groups can only exist at the end of a carbon chain due to their structure. So what happens in a carboxyl, in the oxidation of a primary alkanol is basically these hydrogens are removed and what we end up with is rather than having this carbon bonded to a hydroxyl group and two individual hydrogen atoms, we have the carbon bonded to a hydroxyl group and then we have it double bonded to an oxygen. So we're basically replacing these two hydrogen atoms with one oxygen atom. And so the way that this can happen, if we use ethanol as our example again, we have our ethanol molecule here. And then what we're doing is we are using that to uh, produce, with the aid of some oxygen, our ethanoic acid molecule. And not only oxygen can oxidize this, this ethanol molecule, obviously any oxidant uh, is able to convert our ethanol molecule to an ethanoic acid molecule. So this oxygen here as the catalyst could be replaced by possibly some permanganate or some chromium or something like that that also has the ability to oxidize. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at an example we're going to look at a few different molecules and we're going to decide whether or not they can be oxidized to produce carboxylic acids. So we have to make sure that the alkanol we're dealing with is a primary alkanol before we can decide whether or not it can be oxidized. And if it can be oxidized, we're going to try and name the, uh, the, the, the acid, the carboxylic acid that is produced. So we've got three structures here that we're going to look at. So again, I'm not going to draw in all the hydrogens. I'm just going to represent all of our hydrogens with lines like that. So these are just the bonds and the hydrogens are obviously up there, but I'm not writing the H's. So we've got this structure here. So this is, we've got a string of four carbons, a hydroxyl group on the second carbon. So this is butan 2 -ol. Now, this hydroxyl group here is bonded to a carb is bonded to this carbon here. This carbon is bonded to two other carbons, making it a secondary alkanol, and thus uh, our secondary alkanol, our butan 2 ol cannot be oxidized to produce carboxylic to produce a carboxylic acid. Now our second one, we have this here. So we've got all of our carbon atoms, like so, and we've got a hydroxyl group there. Now this time, the carbon atom that is bonded to the hydroxyl group is bonded to one other carbon, making it a primary alkanol, and thus, yes, this does work. And so the original molecule that we're dealing with is a primary alkanol, and we've got, so it's, and the longest carbon chain is four, the alkanol, the, uh, the hydroxyl group is on the first carbon, and we've got a methyl group on the third carbon. So we've got three methyl butan one O. Oh. And so, obviously, if this once this reaction actually occurs, we're going to end up with this sort of structure. And so, what this is called is we've got a carboxylic acid, longest carbon chain of four, and a methyl group there. So we call it 3-methyl-1-O. 
and this should all be one word. We don't have enough room. Three methyl butanoic acid. Now our last example that we're going to look at, we'll make a bit more room again here. Is a little bit more complex to uh, to work out, very slightly, but it's all quite straightforward. So if we have our carbons here, and then our hydroxyl group there, now this time our hydroxyl group is bonded to a side chain. However, it's still bonded to the end of that side chain. This carbon is only bonded to one other carbon, so it's still a primary alkanol. So this will, in fact, work. We can give it a big tick. Now this molecule, the longest carbon chain is five carbons. However, we, the hydroxyl group is on a side chain. So really our main carbon chain has to include the hydroxyl group. So our main carbon chain contains four carbons. And so for that reason, we call this 2-ethyl, as we have, we're considering this an ethyl group on the second carbon of this chain here. So we've got 2-ethyl butin one -ol. And so if we were to adjust this a little bit, so that we had a structure that looks like this, then what we would have would be 2-ethyl butanoic acid. So again, we have to include, make sure our main carbon chain is the one containing the functional group. So rather than having our main carbon chain containing five, just because it has the most carbons, we have to adjust that to a four carbon chain so that we include the functional group. So this is 2-ethyl butanoic acid. So those are the types of alkanols that can be oxidized and the types of reactions that alkanols can undergo, and that's how we name our product in those oxidation reactions.